We'll get that. Dr. Doof. It's Friday, or as I like to call it, Thursday. I remember uh, when I was in middle school, that reminds me, a little anecdotal thing. When I was in middle school, we used to call Friday, we used to call it Thursday. Thursday without the H. Because uh, one of my friends, uh, Sea Dog, who's not, I mean, I, I gesture like he's player two on the couch tonight, but he's not, hadn't even made his stream debut yet. But we were in we were in school one day, and it was Friday. But he was convinced it was Thursday, and we told him we're like, dude, you know, I think I asked him if you wanted to hang out after school, and he was like, no, nah, man, we can't do that. We got school tomorrow. I'm like, today's Friday, and I said, and he started arguing. He's like, you know, it's Thursday. I looked at the calendar when I woke up. It's Thursday. And I said, dude, are you fucking stupid? It's Friday. It today is Friday, and he said it's Thursday, and then he tried to spell it out. He said T U R. <laughs> he skipped the H. And I'm <laughs> and ever since then, you know, off and on for a few years, we would say uh, we'd say it was Thursday. There was you know Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, and then Saturday. You know, we just take Friday out of the week. <laughs> On tonight's unbox, you guys, you guys know me. I, I love collecting goofy, stupid little handheld games, and we've we've shown off quite a few of them over the years on this stream. Uh, one of the first ones we did was a thing called Stop, and it was it had these little coins that it came with. You had to keep the score yourself with the actual little plastic coins tucked into the side of the thing. Didn't keep score for you, which I thought was kind of weird. It was just a, basically a hangman game, like Wheel of Fortune. And then we also showed off the, the Einstein IQ game, the Radio Shack IQ game, the Pro 200, uh, all the Mattel ones. So I have quite the collection of, of little, you know, tiny portable handheld games. Uh, and it turns out Radio Shack made a whole lot of them because what I have for you tonight in its original box, this is a first. Well, no, no, the uh, uh, Mattel bowling one had its original box. but So this is not a first, this is a second that's uh, even better. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is that you tend not to find these things in their original packaging. So here is a uh, Radio Shack's LCD Fire Away game. It's shaped like a little rocket ship, and you know, I guess you're, you're, we're gonna we're gonna laser blast our uh, our way through some enemies. I don't know if this is the original shrink wrap. I'm assuming it isn't because it does have the original price tag on it. This game was twelve ninety five in. Uh, is there a year? No, but there might be one on the device, so we can adjust for inflation later. But uh, that that price tag is actually uh, underneath the shrink wrap, so I'm pretty sure whatever store this came from like re shrink wrapped it to keep it all together. So I'm fine with taking that off. It doesn't bother me. It's not destroying the value. It's not like mint in package. So you got fire away. It says it includes a battery. But I'm assuming, I'm assuming it's not going to work. So just in case it doesn't work, <laughs> I brought I brought both a CR3032 or 2032 battery and then I brought uh, with me three of these little button cell ones that are pretty common in handheld things. These are the same ones that were inside that handheld Fred keychain. So, you know, I got, I got a bunch of those left over. Uh, packaging is real simple. There's nothing on the back except just the barcode and it says you know manufactured in china for radio shack uh if you look on this on the side of the box it says defend your spaceship against the alien invasion force quick response fire button left right joystick that ain't that ain't a fucking joy get the fuck out of it well maybe maybe holy shit maybe that is a little thing down there wow uh two skill levels and sound effects no music but it does have uh does have sound effects yeah i'm not too big on when they just sticker the box but technically i mean it is a radio shack price tag on the, you know the radio shack thing so this might even lend some like you know provenance to it if i decided to to part with this and sell it i don't know how much this is worth i didn't look it up i don't i'm not really a a, a rolodex of, of value for you know different values for things but i don't know anyways we're gonna we're gonna open it up and take a look at it and uh, maybe play it if it does work. I brought some little screwdrivers to take it apart if needed. So, oh man, it's even got its original. No, it's still like, it's just, are you shitting me? Is it? Okay, hang on. 
there are no buttons for me to touch uh, up here where I grabbed it. So unless this thing is sensitive to light, this might have been on just in this box since like 1980. <laughs> Hang on. What the hell? It's just on. It's a little this it's it's playing itself. Not playing itself, but it's it's on. Hang on. Oh, dude. So there's like there's the original Oh, this is badass. This is the original, I guess the sales receipt from the first person who bought this. But this came all the way from uh Richmond Heights, Ohio. So it's a, it's a long way from home. I'm sure that location doesn't exist anymore. I don't know who's got that phone number. Don't call it. Uh, oh, no, this is... Oh, my God. This is a credit card receipt. This is an old-ass credit card receipt. And the date... Look at this. The date up there. December 16th, 1988. That's... It's almost been... What? That's 30... 30 88? 31 years? Since the... The date, if I would have just waited it like three more months, this would have been 30, 31 years ago that this thing has apparently, possibly, been sitting in this box on, I guess. Uh, I don't see the people's credit card number. Uh, I think this is just for statement verification. I, you know, whenever they do the... This is the... Oh my god. In, in a time before you just swiped your card at the little pen pad and it went... Doo -doo 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 -doo, they would put this paper in the little machine right this little it's a mechanical device they put, put the receipt in there put your card underneath it and they had a, a, a little bar a little uh thing that they would slide across to make an imprint of your credit card details on the receipt so that they could then charge you accordingly and then this is on the other end of it where the cashier filled out uh what was purchased it's very light it just says game and uh it was twelve dollars and ninety-five cents, which is the price on the sticker. Tax on this, holy shit! Ohio has it made. Tax on that was only ninety cents apparently back then, which brought the total to a uh, thirteen eighty-five for that. So, and there's nothing on the back except for the return policy. <laughs> that's actually that's really cool. <laughs> I had no idea that that's what this was. That's, that is, that is, yeah, the swiper machine. That's the thing I'm telling you about. Okay, well, it still has the original manual. Please read before using this equipment. Fire away LCD screen. I mean, this looks like, this looks like it might even be the same font from, like, the NES manuals back in the day. It, it looks like, hang on, can we get a focus on this right here? That that's the font from like the Super Mario Brothers manual, like the original one. Uh, the aliens, the aliens, are attacking. Use your laser tank to destroy the alien ships. Watch out! The aliens are shooting back. If you get hit three times, the game is over. In a, wait, what? In addition to providing you with hours of exciting fun. Your Fire Away LCD game is also a full-featured alarm block. How you fucking... Well, I guess C and B are kind of close on the keyboard. I mean, they're separate. There's, there's, an, there's a V between them, but whatever. Okay, so it came with a battery, but it didn't come with the battery already installed. Uh, that's actually what this little divot on the packaging was. You opened it yourself, and then uh, you just put the battery in the back or whatever. And it... Like... For real though, has this just been on the entire time? It's keeping time. It's it says 127. That's not correct, but <laughs> you know what I noticed? There's not there's not an off feature on this. There's no on off button. So I think this is just in the clock mode. Like it it just plays through this and does these animations and and uh, illuminates the uh uh the screen and then it shows the clock at the top so i guess you can I, it doesn't it doesn't look like it stands up does it stand up no I, I don't know how you would use this as a clock 
but okay. Uh, tells you how to replace the battery, which is, you know, whatever. How to set the how to set the alarm time because it is. I mean, it is an alarm block according to the, the thing here. Uh, and then finally on the back it says, "Here's how to play the game." I'm pretty sure I can figure this out. Uh, use the control stick to move the laser tank to the left and right. Avoid the missiles. Press the fire button to shoot down the enemies. Uh, Ten points for every alien. Uh, for every thousand points, you get a thirty-second bonus round, where the aliens are worth fifty. Wait, the the maximum possible score is twenty thousand. Why isn't it ninety-nine nine ninety-nine? It's just got a digital readout. That's really interesting. That the it's capped it. It's capped at 2,000. Do not drop the game or handle it roughly. Do not store game in dusty or dirty areas. Do not disassemble your game. <laughs> well, I'm not going to take it apart, but... That's really that's really neat. Like, I figured this was going to be in the, man, in, the, in the box, but I didn't think the original receipt... I mean, it's faded to hell, but that's... I don't know, this... This is all like the, the experience that is associated with this almost means more to me than just this goofy ass game. But let's let's take a look at, at this uh, fire away game. Is it? Oh, now it thinks I'm trying to set the time. Okay, mode. Game. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. So we've got three. What? Who am I? Sh oh, okay. I see him down there. I, I think. <laughs> I mean, it makes a lot of noise for what it is. So, oh shit, I walked right into that, that missile. It's kind of hard to see what's going on. I see, I see the missiles that they're shooting, but I can't... Oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm dead. And it says game over in curly letters around the sides of it. Well, I scored, uh, I scored, uh, 80 points. Let's see, let's see if I can do any better. I mean, this is what thirteen dollars got you back in uh, nineteen eighty-eight. Okay, it doesn't. Ah, oh, damn it! There doesn't seem to be any penalty for missing for letting him go. Well, I've already beaten my score from last time. <laughs> I'm not very good at this. Ah, oh, shit. Oh, he shoots two missiles out at a time. Well, if they, if you get a guy on the left and the right, then you're fucked, because then you can't dodge any of that. So, were the were the Game & Watch little handhelds, were those still a thing in the late 80s? Because, oh, damn it. Oh, I died again. Game over. Let's, can we get a... Game over. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. Then again, I'm also holding it at a uh, awkward angle. So if I hit mode, will it? So wait, hang on. So there's a clock. There's the alarm. There's game. But whoa, this isn't mentioned in the manual. If I press it again, it says super game up top. So I want to see what a. Uh, I want to see what super game is. Is it just really fast or? I feel like it is going faster. The sound effect seems faster. No, maybe they just shoot a lot more missiles. Seems like they're still worth 10 points apiece, so you, you don't score more points for playing on a harder difficulty. It's really kind of charming in a way, though, just with how simple it is. Just that, you know, in 1988, Stuff like these goofy little handheld games, like, this doesn't exist anymore to- oh, shit. I mean, that's basically this. that's basically the same game, it's, they just shoot more rockets at you. Stuff like this doesn't really exist anymore in, uh, uh, 
you know, 2019 modern era, and it, it hasn't for a long time. Uh, these little LCD games were really only viable for a very brief period of time, and even then, this is 1988. The NES had been out in North America for three years by that point, and I'm pretty sure... Was the Sega Genesis available? Did that come out in 88? Or was that 89? I'm not actually, I'm not actually sure about that, but... Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is that even when this came out, this was already a relic of uh, another era. And I think you guys also pointed out that, like, the Game & Watch handhelds, those, like, those had not even been a thing, you know, since the NES came out. Like, those were dead and gone, which is, which is kind of what I thought. Uh, I figured those were very much a thing of the late 70s and the early 80s, and this is something from 88. Is there a year on the back? No, it just says uh, 8A8, eight, 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 which is a quality control inspection thing. Actually, I didn't point it out, but it's also on the inside of the bottom of the box down there, which the camera doesn't really seem to want to be able to see. I wonder what size battery it does take, though. Did I even get the right kind of batteries out for it? Does this door even come off? <laughs> now I'm kind of now I'm kind of scared to. Oh, it says up. Wait. No, that tells you how to put the battery in. That's not what you do with the door. I'm not gonna fuck with the door because I don't want to actually rip it off the back. I don't want to break it. I'll do that like later when I take the battery out so that when I put this back in its case, it's not being stored uh, with the battery. Uh, one of y'all asked what the alarm sounds like, so let me. Let me see how you do this. Setting the clock, setting the alarm time. Okay, so if we set it to 12.01, then we hit set. Okay. So now, if we go back to... Oh, hang on, I think we probably kind of shot ourselves in the foot here. Well, now we're just literally just watching seconds pass on a clock. Now this is like really a... This is really gripping. Oh. That's cool. That's neat. That's, it's, I like that. There, there is a certain type of just unashamed like shameless just goofy charm to that I don't I don't know this is something that has no practical value or use today it's a crappy little one game thing the game is not even that good it's like a it's like a crappy game and watch thing it's got a clock built into it but so does everything these days like I'm sitting right here I've got a phone I've got a computer, I've got a monitor, I've got a clock on the wall that I technically don't even need to have on the wall because I've already got a bunch of clocks in my vicinity. But basically, the point I'm trying to make is that, like, oh, and I have a microwave and a stove. <laughs> you know, there's, there's like six or seven things just in my vicinity that I can look at to see what time it is. So, something like this has no purpose these days, but I don't know. Hearing that goofy little alarm chime it could have just been like this nasty little beep but it, no it plays a little jingle like somebody somebody made that somebody on whatever little tiny circuit board is inside this thing they they wrote that little jingle so that it would so that it would, it would play whenever you set the alarm and i think that's pretty special and i'm also trying to turn the alarm off so that it doesn't just keep uh going on and on and on i like this and like i said i don't remember how much i paid for this in fact i don't even really remember where i got this I probably had to have found this at some type of gaming convention or something, or maybe a maybe a retro game store. When I'm ever, whenever I on the off chance I travel somewhere, uh, don't remember buying this. But it's, it's been in my prop closet for a while, and I find it endearing in a weird way. That I guess, like I said, there's no off button. So, however long that battery has been in this device, it's just been showing the time. Not even the right time for God knows how long. Like, it was in that little package, in that box, shrink-wrapped. Maybe the store that I got this from, maybe they put a battery in it to test it to see if it worked. So maybe it hasn't been just aimlessly keeping time 
for 30 years. I don't think that's the case. Uh, that's a possibility. But that's quite strange if this has just been on just the whole time. It's it's weird. It's a very... That's a very lonely existence. That's a very depressing thing to think about. Just some weird game that has a clock feature built into it that nobody's touched because the world has forgotten about it and it's just been aimlessly keeping time and nobody's cared to even ask it what time it is but that, that's just what it does because that's all it's been designed to do. That does kind of sound like a creepypasta. Also, WaveCube, E.T. Di Digital Companion has some competition. I don't think so. This trumps E.T. Digital Companion. It's It does its job better. Because I think we actually messed with the clock in that game and found out that it's, it's slow. Or it's fat. It's it's one or the other. It doesn't keep seconds very well. It's it's it's, it's fucked up. Anyways, that's that's the Fire Away uh, handheld game from, from Radio Shack. Uh, the credit card receipt from the original purchase said this was bought in 88. There's not a year of manufacture on the device, so I'm just going to assume that it was bought at the end of 1988, so chances are it probably came out in 88 or 87, maybe, and it was bought so close to the Christmas season that this may very well have been some kid's Christmas present, and, uh, I don't know. Like, like you think about stuff like that, now since there's a date associated with it, you know, you, you start you start piecing together this thing's story you start thinking about stuff like that so i don't know you, you can draw your own conclusions but for what it's worth i think it's a nice little novelty you know was it worth 13 dollars back in the late 80s probably not you know it's <laughs> this is more like even back then you know 13 dollars was not 13 dollars in today's money that was more like in the ballpark of like 28 bucks or something it was it, it was it was a lot of money so it's it's a pretty pretty steep investment, but I don't know. I mean, if if you're into collecting handheld games and stuff like this, this is a pretty unique one because the way it's shaped. I like that aspect of it. It looks cool. It looks like a little ship, and it has a little a tiny little joystick down here that I thought was interesting. It said it said a uh, control stick. I'm like, nah, -uh. and then I looked. I'm like, no shit. But so we got that. Anyways, that's Fire Away from Radio Shack from the Tandy Corporation back when they when they still called it that. Hey, thanks for checking out Gatorbox on YouTube. We really appreciate it. If you like what you saw and you want to kick around with us live, follow us on Twitch because we do this several times during the week. And if you want to support this channel, you can do so by subscribing right here on YouTube, following or subscribing over on Twitch, or even making a pledge on Patreon. Your support over the years has been tremendous. Thank you so, so much. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video right here on Gatorbox.